It's really neat to stand here and see all the Apple logos going from all the computer screens facing me. <laughs> well, we're here to talk about the iPhone. We launched the first iPhone in 2007, and what an incredible breakthrough it was for the entire industry. I think Time Magazine put it best when they put iPhone on the cover of the magazine. They called it the innovation of the year, and they wrote that it is the phone that has changed phones forever. And boy, were they right. It simply went on to become the number one smartphone in the world. We started with that first iPhone, and each and every year, we introduced new versions with new features, new innovations, each time setting a new bar for what is the gold standard in the phone marketplace. And we're going to do that again today. Today, we're going to introduce iPhone 5. And I'd like to show it to you right now. So let's take a look at the brand new iPhone 5. It is an absolute jewel. It is the most beautiful product we have ever made, bar none. We'll put a video up on screen so you can see it even bigger, <laughs> since it's so small. And this is iPhone 5. <laughs> I'm going to take you through it, and I hope when we're done, you'll love it just as much as we do. Thank you. So iPhone 5. It is made entirely of glass and aluminum. It's designed and built to an exacting level of standard, unlike anything we or anyone in our industry has made before. And I don't think it is an exaggeration to say that the hardware and software engineering that has gone into this product is the most challenging our team has ever taken on. And what they have accomplished is simply amazing. So let's walk through it. First, iPhone 5 is the thinnest phone we have ever made. It is the lightest as well. The new iPhone 5 is just 7.6 millimeters thin. That's 18% thinner than the iPhone 4S. And best of all, it's the world's thinnest smartphone. It also weighs just 112 grams. That's 20% lighter, one-fifth lighter than the iPhone 4S. Volumetrically, it's smaller as well. So before we get into it, this is the monumental, monumental challenge the team had. Can you make a phone that has everything the iPhone 4S has before you even talk about new features in a design that's thinner, lighter, and smaller than the previous product? It is really easy to make a new product that's bigger. Everyone does that. That's not the challenge. The challenge is to make it better and smaller. So let's start with the product. It starts, of course, with the display. iPhone 5 is a retina display, the same 326 pixels per inch. And it is a stunning display in every way. Every iPhone to date has had a 3.5 inch screen. But the new screen on iPhone 5 is a 4 inch display. In terms of pixels, it's 1,136 by 640. So the same width, but taller, giving it a natural 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But why would we design it that way? What is the design center for a phone? It's this. It's your hand. A phone should feel great in your hand, and more importantly, it should be easy to use with this magical device we all carry called a horizontally opposed thumb. It does most of the hard work for us. So when you carry your phone, it should fit beautifully in your hand. It should be easy to send messages, type emails, surf the web, 
And that's just how he designed iPhone 5. This display is simply amazing. Let's zoom in a little closer. You see with the vertical pixels now, we're able to add a fifth row of icons to your home screen, so more apps on every screen. And all the software that comes on the iPhone 5 has been updated to take advantage of this display. So you see more of the web when you're surfing Safari. You see more of your email and mail. Your calendar shows more events. And as you probably know, when you turn your calendar sideways in the iPhone, it automatically goes into week view. And now you see a full five-day work week, where previously it was just over three days. It's a really useful view. And all of our software is being updated as well to take advantage of this display. Our iWork applications. So Keynote, Pages, Numbers, all take advantage of this gorgeous display. Our iLife software as well. iPhoto, iMovie, GarageBand. There's much more room to work and play. But Tim told you there's 700,000 applications in the App Store. What happens with all of them? Well, this is part of the brilliance of the design. Here is an application that has not been updated because the developer didn't know yet about iPhone 5. It's exactly how it would run when you launch it. It runs at the same size as it does on every previous iPhone. We don't have to stretch it or scale it. It fits perfectly with the same dimensions. We center it, and we just subtly place black borders on either side of it that you don't even notice. It works exactly as the developer intended it to. The same is true in the vertical position as well. So all your software works just like before. Now we have given us some of the developers early access to take a peek at the iPhone 5 and this new 4-inch Retina display and to see what they'll do with their applications. And what we learned is two things. One, they can update their apps very quickly. And number two, when they want to, they don't want to just make it bigger. They want to do more with this display. So let me just show you two quick examples, before and after, of two popular applications. First, CNN. This is the application, if you use it like many of us do, it's working just like you're used to. But now with their update, they take more advantage of that beautiful display, have more areas to present the stories, just a better application. Here's a second example, open table. You've likely used this to make reservations. This is how it is currently. It works just like before. And here's their new update, taking advantage of this gorgeous display. They've updated to show restaurants. They've actually applied some of the techniques and user interface of their iPad app into the iPhone now with the larger display area. And everything you do looks gorgeous on this display. Photos, TV shows, of course, movies take advantage of that beautiful widescreen display. When I say it looks better, they really do look better. This display has 44% more color saturation than the iPhone 4S display. And if you know about this stuff, this takes NAS us to full sRGB color specification. So this is the most accurate display in the industry. And the engineering team went much further than that. They did some breakthrough work and have integrated the touch sensors right into the display itself. Others put a, a layer called an Ido layer on top. By doing this, we make it 30% thinner than the previous display, and we remove a layer, making the image sharper, having less glare and sunlight. This truly is the world's most advanced display. We couldn't be prouder of it. And that's the first feature in the new iPhone 5. <laughs> Next, ultra-fast wireless technology. Again, you can imagine the challenge the engineering team faced. Make the iPhone thinner, lighter, smaller. Build in all the wireless technology you had with iPhone 4S and take it further. And that's what they've done. They've built in GPRS, Edge, EVDO, HSPA, making it a great 3G world phone, just like the iPhone 4S. But to that, we've added HSPA+, Plus, dual carrier HSDPA, and yes, LTE. So LTE gives you a theoretical maximum downlink of up to 100 megabits per second, and it just screams. So how did they do this? This took a lot of incredibly advanced engineering. There's now a single chip, baseband chip for voice and data, and a single radio chip as well. This saves a great deal of space. And we have a really unique Apple innovation in a dynamic antenna. We started this with the iPhone 4S and taken it much further with iPhone 5, where it can automatically switch antenna connections on the base antenna between different networks, creating different virtual length antennas. 
Now you probably know LTE is probably the most complicated networking technology ever brought to this earth. And there are different bands and frequencies around the world. So an important question is who are we working with to roll out LTE on iPhone 5? Well, in the US, we have great partners we're working with, AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint to support LTE on iPhone 5. In Canada, Rogers, TELUS, Bell, Virgin, Fido, Kudo. In Asia, SoftBank, KDDI, SKT, KT, Smartone, M1, and Singtel. In Australia, Telstra, Optus, Virgin Mobile. In Europe, Deutsche Telekom, and the brand new Everything Everywhere that's just launched their EE LTE network in the UK. Now in Europe, there's something else really interesting going on. There's a lot of adoption of this new dual carrier HSDPA network. So here's a list of all the carriers we're working on that with, with us as well. Just great coverage of the dual carrier network. So ultra-fast wireless doesn't just stop with cellular. We've also built in higher performing Wi-Fi as well. With iPhone 5, we have 802.11a joining B, G, and N. 802.11n is now 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and that's dual channel 5 gigahertz for much greater performance. So you can get a theoretical maximum performance of 100 megabits per second of bandwidth on 802.11. So that's ultra-fast wireless. Now, we're going to keep going with this, and what you're going to hear as I go through each step, we've updated every aspect of iPhone 5. Everything has been enhanced, re-engineered, redesigned over iPhone 4S. So what's next? System performance, a brand new chip, the Apple A6 chip. Compared to the A5, it's two times faster at CPU, two times faster at graphics. Our expertise in chip design is really showing itself here. Because not only is it a huge jump forward in performance, it's also 22% smaller, making it more space and energy efficient. The team has done a remarkable job. You're going to see that across many of the things you do, whether you're launching apps like Pages, saving images from your photo app, loading up the music app with songs to play, viewing attachments and keynotes, really seeing basically 2x performance across the board. And developers are going to love what they can do with this new A6 chip, the performance they get for their CPU and graphic intense applications. So we thought, let's, let's get a developer to get their hands on this A6 chip and the new iPhone 5 and show you what can be done with state-of-the-art performance and graphics. So I'm really excited to invite out Rob Murray, executive producer at EA Studios, to show you some amazing work they're doing on the new A5, A6 chip on the iPhone 5. Rob? <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Phil. Hi, everyone. Now we're known for creating the ultimate racing experience on iOS. Well, the new iPhone lets us take this to a whole new level. So today, I'm going to show you Real Racing 3 for the first time. And you're going to see a Porsche GT3 racing on the legendary raceway Laguna Seca. Now we've got Vince up here to help. Hi, Vince. Let's get it started. Look at the graphics here. Now these graphics, they've been built to full console quality. And they're running on the powerful new iPhone. I mean, all this is running in the palm of your hands. It's incredible. Now have a look down the side of this Porsche. See the reflections? You see the car and the track reflecting dynamically in the bodywork. Now this not only looks awesome, but it actually shows you a bit of what's going on around you. I mean, it actually makes the game easier to play as do rear view mirrors. Yes, for the first time in real racing, you can see behind you. It's great. <laughs> so you've seen the graphics, but Vince has been dissing my re racing recently. So we're taking this out on the track today. And that's me up ahead, Rob M, the flight control icon there. And you're seeing Vince trying to catch me. Now you might be wondering, you now Vince and I are racing, and we are, 
How is it that he's driving, but I'm just standing here? Well, we used Game Center to produce one of the coolest new features in Real Racing 3, time-shifted multiplayer. So I can challenge Vince one day, and he can race me the next. And what you're seeing up ahead, that's actually my race from yesterday. I'd see it a lot closer if Vince could catch me. <laughs> nice one, Vince. So this is not just a ghost, because you saw Vince bump me. He can fully interact with his vehicle. He can jostle for race position, and he can actually affect my final time in the race. Now this, this is something we have never seen done before. And this is Real Racing 3 for the powerful new iPhone. Real tracks, real cars, real people. You can play against any time you like. And it's coming to the App Store later this year. Thanks, everyone. If you're a fan of the Real Racing app like I am, you know that it is truly state-of-the-art in the physics and the realism it brings. And now to marry that with console-quality graphics is un unheard of and unseen before. Truly epitomizes what can be done in the palm of your hand with that A6 chip. So we've got an A6 chip. We've got LTE networking. We've got a larger four-inch retina display. You can imagine the challenge the team face now of, of trying to even match the battery life the iPhone 4S has in a thinner and lighter design. And we're really proud because what they've done is not only match, but exceed the battery life of the iPhone 4S. So eight hours of 3G talk time and 3G browsing, eight hours of LTE browsing, 10 hours of Wi-Fi browsing, 10 hours of video playback, 40 hours of music playback, 225 hours of standby time. Incredible battery life in the world's thinnest smartphone. Next, the camera. Another area we've done a tremendous amount of engineering in. Now, if you know anything about camera design, you know the biggest challenge is vertical height. Making something thinner is the worst thing you can do to a camera team. So we asked them to go ahead and try to create a camera to fit in a new th thinner, lighter iPhone 5 and deliver the kind of performance we had of the I with the iPhone 4S camera that is heralded as perhaps the best camera in the entire market. And they've done that. They have built in an 8 megapixel sensor, 3264 by 2448, backside illuminated for great low light performance, hybrid IR filter, five element lens, and a fast f2.4 aperture. All the things you loved about the iPhone 4S, now in a camera design, it's 25% smaller. That was a huge undertaking. But they didn't stop there. They've enhanced this camera even further. A few of the examples of what it has now is a new dynamic low light mode. So when you're in low light situations, the ISP senses that and is able to combine multiple pixels together to give you up to two f-stops greater performance in those scenarios. And you really see the difference in your low light pictures. And this optical system has been amazing with this five element lens. One of the best ways to get a better, sharper image through an optical system is more advanced alignment of those lenses for focusing. And the team now is measuring down to the micron level to create better aligned lenses. And you really see a difference in the quality of the image. And for the first time, we cap off this optical system with a sapphire crystal lens cover. But you know, sapphire is renowned for being hard and crystal clear and it helps protect your lens and make your images clearer and sharper. Well, on top of this camera system, we have a new ISP, image signal processor from Apple built into the A6 chip. And it does some tremendous things to help improve your photography. It does spatial noise reduction. We want to remove the noisy particles, especially in low light images. So by looking at surrounding pixels, we can determine where the noise is and help remove that. We also have an Apple technology called a smart filter that looks at the image before the ISP does its noise reduction and can figure out where there's areas that should be uniform color, like a blue sky, and other areas where they're texture and you shouldn't be doing noise reduction on that. And it's really powerful to deliver amazing low light performance. We also have faster photo capture. And the iPhone 4S was already really fast. This is now 40% faster. But it all adds up to simply using it and seeing what kind of pictures you can get. So we've taken the iPhone 5, We've taken pictures with it, and these are from the camera, untouched, and see what you think. 
The ocean just looks bluer on the iPhone 5. Kids look happier. <laughs> they really do. And the world is just a more beautiful place when you take pictures with the iPhone 5. Now this is incredible. This is a macro photo, beautiful bokeh or blurred background as you would want from a great camera system. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. Look at that bee. You can see the veins on the wings of the bee. I don't know if you've ever tried to do that in a photo. It's not easy. This camera is tremendous. And with iOS 6 and iCloud, you now have a new feature called shared photo streams, where you can take your photos and automatically share them with your friends and family where they can like them and comment on them. But perhaps the most amazing feature of the new camera in iPhone 5 is called Panorama. And this is incredible. With typical legendary Apple ease of use, you just tap and say, I want to take a panorama photo. You hold your phone vertical to get the maximum area, and then you just sweep your scene. And the software tells you what pace to sweep it at to get the perfect image. And what it does is astounding. You get remarkably beautiful photographs, incredible panoramas. This image is 28 megapixels in size, taken right on your iPhone 5 camera. And what the software does is um, unbelievable. Behind the scenes, in real time, while you're panning, it is taking slices of photos, finding the edges, stitching them together, creating seamless transitions between those photos for one beautiful panorama. It's even able to turn, determine a nonlinear path through it if you're not perfectly stable and align it, and remove some of the echo artifacts you get if people or objects are moving while you're trying to get that pan. It is truly breakthrough software for panorama photos. Let me zoom in a little more and show you the quality of this image. It's simply stunning the detail. Now, we use this one because it's a tough one. So you can see the exposure changes from one end to the other as it goes from dark to light. There's even people standing there in the corner that were tougher to see when we pulled out to such a large photo. I have one other example just to show you how much fun you can have with the panorama feature. This is one panorama photo. This looks like there's two people in it. Those are not twins. That's the same person. I'll leave it to fans of the iPhone to figure out how to do pictures like this and have a blast taking fun panorama photos. Well, the camera is amazing for taking pictures. It's also a lot better for video as well. We still take 1080p HD video. We've improved the video stabilization with the new ISP and the A6 chip. We have face detection for up to 10 faces while you're shooting the video. And, of course, you can take photos while you're recording video. And the camera on the front has been updated as well. The FaceTime camera is now a FaceTime HD camera, 720p, backside illuminated for great low light performance, does face detection, and you can do FaceTime over cellular networks as well. So that's the new camera, EyeSight and FaceTime cameras built into iPhone 5. Everything's been updated in iPhone 5, and that goes for the audio system as well. We now have not two, but three microphones built in to iPhone 5. One on the bottom, one on the front, and another on the back. This helps in many situations. You're doing a FaceTime call, you're creating a video, you've got the perfect placement for your microphones. We can use them for noise cancellation solutions, and we can use them for beam forming, which is important on voice recognition in applications like Siri. So big advance in the, in the microphones. We've improved the speaker as well. Now instead of two magnets in the transducer, there's five magnets. It gives a better frequency response for the audio. And best of all, they fit it into a space that's 20% smaller while sounding better. We've even updated the earpiece so that when you hold it to your head and make a call, not only do we noise cancellation on your voice going out to whoever you're speaking with, we do noise cancellation on what you hear through your own earpiece, removing some of the surrounding noise in your area to make it clearer to listen to your call. And we've got a new technology called wideband audio if you want amazing sound performance. But what's this? Well, on a typical cell phone call, this is what it looks like, the frequency of of the data in your voice, and you see it's somewhat compressed around the mid-range to help make that call more intelligible. But it doesn't sound entirely natural all the time. So with wideband audio, we can fill out more of the frequency spectrum and make your voice sound even more natural. This is a new technology. We're just starting it, and we have carrier partners around the world working with us on it. We'll have 20 at launch supporting this. 
great partners like Deutsche Telekom and Orange supporting it at launch. So that's the new audio system in the iPhone 5. Next. <laughs> the connector. You know, the iPhone from its start has used the iPod 30 pin connector, which we launched originally in 2003. And it served us well for almost a decade. But so much has changed since we first created that 30 pin connector. So many of the things we used to do over the wire, we now do wirelessly. We use Bluetooth now to connect to speakers and headphones and car systems. We use Wi-Fi to, for example, use, do airplay to our TV or to our stereo. We can do Wi-Fi syncing to iTunes now. And best of all, with iCloud, we can download all our content wirelessly and even back up to the cloud. So a lot's changed, and it's time for the connector to evolve. And that's just what we've done. Our new connector is called Lightning. So now we have Thunderbolt and Lightning in our connector strategy. This connector is a modern connector for the next decade. All digital, eight signal design. It's adaptive to what those signals need to be for the different accessories you might plug into. It's more durable and much easier to use because now you can plug it in in either direction. It doesn't matter. And best of all for the engineering team to make a product like this, it's 80% smaller. It's a huge difference in the world's thinnest smartphone. We're working with accessory makers to have them integrate lightning connectors into products you may choose to buy, for example, this holiday season. We have great partners working with us, partners like Bose, JBL, Bowers and Wilkins, Bang and Olufsen, and many more. But what about all the devices and speakers and connectors you have now that you already have that use a 30-pin connector? Well, we're creating a bunch of accessories to help you with that. This is a 30-pin to lightning adapter, and it works just like you'd expect. You can plug your 30-pin cable into it and it into your iPhone 5. So a typical example for this might be in your car, where you have an iPod connection kit. You just plug in this adapter, you can just leave it there. Now whenever you jump in your car, plug in iPhone 5, and you can charge and listen to your music as you go. So that's the new lightning connector. It's thinner than the iPhone 4S. And best of all, it's the world's thinnest smartphone. It also weighs just 112 grams. That's 20% lighter, one-fifth lighter, than the iPhone 4S. Volumetrically, it's smaller as well. So before we get into it, this is the monumental, monumental challenge the team had. Can you make a phone that has everything the iPhone 4S has before you can talk about new features in a design that's thinner, lighter, and smaller than the previous product? It is really easy to make a new product that's bigger. Everyone does that. That's not the challenge. The challenge is to make it better and smaller. So let's start with the product. It starts, of course, with the display. iPhone 5 is a retina display. So let's take a look at the brand new iPhone 5. It is an absolute jewel. <laughs> it is the most beautiful product we have ever made, bar none. We'll put a video up on screen so you can see it even bigger, since it's so small. And this is iPhone 5. I'm going to take you through it, and I hope when we're done, you'll put iPhone on the cover of the magazine. They called it the innovation of the year, and they wrote, that it is the phone that has changed phones forever. And boy, were they right. It simply went on to become the number one smartphone in the world. We started with that first iPhone, and each and every year, we introduced new versions with new features, new innovations, each time setting a new bar for what is the gold standard in the phone marketplace. And we're going to do that again today. Today, we're going to introduce iPhone 5. And I'd like to show it to you. 
right now. It's really neat to stand here and see all the Apple logos going from all the computer screens facing me. <laughs> well, we're here to talk about the iPhone. We launched the first iPhone in 2007, and what an incredible breakthrough it was for the entire industry. I think Time Magazine put it best when they love it just as much as we do. Thank you. So, iPhone 5, it is made entirely of glass and aluminum. It's designed and built to an exacting level of standard, unlike anything we or anyone in our industry has made before. And I don't think it is an exaggeration to say that the hardware and software engineering that has gone into this product is the most challenging our team has ever taken on. And what they have accomplished is simply amazing. So let's walk through it. First, iPhone 5 is the thinnest phone we have ever made. It is the lightest as well. The new iPhone 5 is just 7.6 millimeters thin. That's 